Halloween was like three weeks ago, but if you are still watching this video right now, the chances are you are a very good person. Alright, so so far we built all the drawing part. So now you are supposed to be able to draw whatever you like. So in this video we're gonna save the shapes into JSON format, then reload it. I also create those user interface. But I found some several issues in my code in the previous videos, so let me fix them at first quickly. First, I forgot to change this increment in the complete function from shape index plus plus to equal shapes dot length minus one. Because when we press C, a new JS object is added in the array shapes to create a new shape. So no matter what what current shape index is, when we press C, we wanna jump edit to the new shape, right? Okay, next. Yeah, I also need to add dot indices uh, here in the key pressed function. Uh, do you remember what this code does? Mm. This code when we press up or down arrow keys, if this array indices the length is zero, uh, which is the case we deleted all the vertex of particular shape, then remove the JS object itself. Because we delete this, we delete the shape, so we don't need it anymore. And actually, and actually, we also need to put this one cause to here in the complete function. Okay. I guess those fixes solves almost all the problems. Another thing you can improve is creating a function to reset the slider values with current shapes properties. Okay, I call this function right after change the index here and here. So that every time I change the index, the slider values are reset for current shapes. You see that? All right, back to the saving JSON file. Finally, we're gonna dive into today's content. JSON, aka JavaScript Object Notation, is one of the data representation formats around there. It can store a big amount of data and often we use it to data transfer via internet. In this case, we use it for saved drawing data. For instance, this is a JSON I saved for the pumpkin mask <laughs> that you saw several times in this tutorial series. And you notice the data structure is very similar to the array of the JS object. Only difference is now those property names are surrounded by those double quotes. And the big array contains all of those is now in this curly bracket. In JavaScript, there are two functions for convert between JS object and JSON. So we can really easily work on those two things. And pfab.js has uh, functions to create a JSON too. That's this save JSON. When we give JS object to this, this function converts them to JSON, then export the file. So let's implement that thing. In the key typed function, let's use J on the keyboard this time. I just put the array shapes in this curly bracket, then save the JSON file with this name. I press J on the keyboard. Okay, let's open it. Yeah, we see here. Okay, and there are two objects. The first one has four vertices, which is here. And the second one has three. Okay, perfect. Next, let's import a JSON file. First, I make a folder next to the project files. Rename the file to fastdraw.json and move inside the folder. In the code, I make a variable to store a JSON. I also make function preload before setup. This is a p5 function to load the data before anything else. After that, we access the big array inside the JSON and override the array shapes. Lastly, set the shape index to shapes.length-1 so that we can work on again from where we left off. All 
Okay, it's working great. Um, okay, I edit a little bit. I need to press C. Yeah, it's working perfect. Oh, um, when we want to reset and create a new drawing from scratch, we just need to press D to delete. Oh, note that in the delete function, it initializes array shapes like this, but this doesn't do anything to the original JSON files. So if I press reload, then the shapes in the JSON shows up again. So practically now we can save the drawing into JSON and reload it. But I wanted to be a little bit more creative, so I actually tried another way to load the JSON file. That's this drag and drop. <laughs> what do you think? That's cool, right? Uh, it's very intuitive. Um, also, can quickly change the data anytime without reload the program. Okay, that's awesome. So let's implement that. I comment out the preload for now. So here's two. Instead, right before I create a canvas, I write drop function. This is a listener hearing when we drop some kind of files on this HTML element. And when that event happens, this callback function got file will be called. Inside of the callback function, we put argument here that file data stored in this variable. By the way, if you know the modern JavaScript syntax, you can also write like this. So I'd like to see the data ones. Now we don't see anything, but if I drag and drop the file, Now we see this information. Um, there are a lot of stuff, but we only need this one, data. If we open the data, uh, yeah, there's that array of shapes. So inside this, if the data type is JSON, I assign the file.data.shapes to the array of shapes and set the shape index to rust shape. If it's not JSON, it doesn't do anything. I drag and drop again. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. It's so satisfying, isn't it? Oh, by the way, you can find a download link to all of my drawing samples in the description below. So try them once. Let me add an extra user interface. I make a boolean is dragged over. I also make two functions, drag over and drag leave. These are event listeners for a file is dragged over and left off. When we drop the file, we want to turn it false. Then, when the file is dragged over the canvas, display the alpha background and the text. Okay, let's see it. Hmm. Okay, good. Ah, it's actually dragged over. I'm gonna correct the spelling. Good. Now, let's make those buttons for the functions. First, uh, those four buttons, screenshot, save, json, shape, index, up, down, 
I experimentally use images for the icons. So first, I put those ping images in the directory. You can also download those ping images from the link in the description below. Next, in the code. Okay, I'm gonna make eight buttons. I put the edit button at the top. And the rest at the bottom. Set the class and ID for each button. So in the CSS, I put those stuff like so. Okay, <laughs> it looks working. Yeah, it's working. Um, this is a class for the image buttons and those for the ID for each of those. At here, I, I load the images then set them as background in the CSS like this. Yeah, and I, I did just the same for the text buttons. Next, we want to give actual functions to the buttons. The code is going to be exactly the same as those in this key type function and this key press function. So what we're going to do is separate each of those into a small functions for reusable. Okay, I want to make sure it's still working before I connect to the buttons. So let's reload it. Okay, I press E. Hmm. Okay, let's some draw shapes. I press C to complete. Okay, still working. Good. Then, yeah, undo function. Let's press Z on the keyboard. Okay, then delete. <laughs> okay. Take a screenshot. I press S. Walking. Then J to save JSON. Okay, so far so good. After that, let's call those functions when the button is pressed. So, <laughs> exciting, let's check it. Mm. I press edit button. <laughs> okay, mm, working perfect. So I press complete. Good, undo. Then delete, okay. Excellent. So let's take a screenshot. Hmm. And uh, save JSON. Okay. I prepare several shapes. Then I change the index. All right, it's working. Ah, I totally forgot that. When we place this edit button, we need to change this text, right? So we write like this. When it's in edit mode, uh, we write mode on. When it's not the edit mode, off. Okay, we roll it. On, off, on, off, okay. Now uh, let's make those sliders look better.
、うん、so, I put border to canvas and video. Looks a bit better. <laughs> Congrats, we finished all this tutorial series. I'm curious how many of you actually get here. If you are watching this and still have energy left over,、uh, please leave a comment below. Katsuki, I finished your tutorial! I'm really, really happy to hear that. I finished this tutorial here, but there are tons of tons of points we can improve this system beyond. For instance, what if you add draw symmetry mode? You know, when we draw those symmetry shapes,、uh, draw left and right side one by one is so time consuming, right? So、um, that's gonna be very handy. Another thing you can come up with is make color setting dialog, e just like general illustration softwares. Currently, we have those sliders, fill, saturation, brightness, and alpha, but they are not that intuitive, so I think that's worth it to try. So, see you in the next video. Bye bye.